going to be palpating the flexor digitorum profundus in this video. The muscle itself is going to be originating solely on the ulna for boning wise and a little bit of the interosseous membrane. It does not cross the elbow joint like its counterpart superficialis. So for this, what we're going to be using is identifying the ulna using the easiest part to find, which is kind of that posterior aspect. So right in here, I can feel the olecranon and then that ulnar shaft. Now the muscle is originating on the anterior surface, so I'm kind of on that posterior medial. What I'm actually going to try to do is curl my fingers on towards the front part of it. Now you should actually be able to feel quite a large muscular belly right off to the side as we're on the medial part of profundus. You're having to push through flexor carpi ulnaris in this, so we're actually going to differentiate them just so you can see the difference. She's going to start by ulnarly deviating her wrist a couple times, like so for me. Okay, I'm seeing kind of minimal motion, a little bit under my fingertips, but not a lot. Now what I'd like you to do is, with your hand, make a tight, tight fist and squeeze that a few times. And relax. And do that again. And you can easily see that profundus is a much larger muscle belly underneath flexor carpi ulnaris. So superficialis is going to be sitting on top in this area here, and I'm underneath it trying to get more on top of the ulna. So I'm going to slowly work my way down that anterior part of the ulna. Can you repeat that again? Good. And let's go a little bit further and repeat it again. Excellent. And we'll go a little bit further. And I'm slowly waking my way distal down the ulna. Now the coronoid process, which is also part of its origins, can be really, really tricky to find, especially differentiating between superficialis and profundus. So I'm going to work my way back up. Instead of just being along that medial part, I'm going to try to sink through. Now to isolate it, we had superficialis doing this action, but I would like profundus to work on trying to flex that distal phalanx for us. So I'm going to sink in get her to relax, and then try to get her to repeat that a few times. So more on the anterior surface of it, trying to get some profundus action more than superficialis trying to stick out. Good. As we work our way towards the wrist, just like superficialis, it's going to turn into tendons. In this case, it's really going to be challenging for us to differentiate them, so we're not going to. Um, all eight tendons, four from superficialis and Four from Profundus will be going through our carpal tunnel. Again, quick identification of the flexor retinaculum with the scaphoid tubercle, trapezium tubercle, pisiform, and hook hamate. So in between there will be the four tendons for Profundus as they work their way into the hand. Now in a previous video for superficialis, we would have been trying to identify its tendons, but in this case, we're going to be adding some resistance just to the distal phalanx for profundus. So I'm going to start with her second digit here and get her to pull against that as I follow the tendon out towards the finger. There's a really good chance you will not be able to identify exactly superficialis versus profundus. Superficialis is more superficial in its name, profundus meaning deep. But once superficialis inserts in that Y shape as it splits, the profundus tendon continues past it, inserting into the distal phalanx. So it's going to be inserting into the distal phalanx of digits 2 through 5. So we're going to repeat this process for each finger. I'm following out along the tendon, past that middle phalanx, and inserting into the distal phalanx. And again, we'll repeat it for the fourth finger here and finally for the fifth finger. Now for profundus's actions again it's going to be creating flexion at all of our finger joints so it's going to curl the whole hand up into a fist plus adding a little bit of wrist flexion at this joint here. And uniquely profundus is two innervations the more medial half of it is from the ulnar nerve, and the more lateral half of it is from the median nerve. 